things we take for granted, how we use our brain is what is a struggle for our residents. Memory, simple things, remembering times of day, appointments, schedules. The bottom line value has got to be the commitment and the values that are shared between you and your staff. When I think of our dementia residents, I have to think about how they contributed to the fabric of our society today. Perhaps the mechanic who worked on my car five years ago is residing in room 202. The teacher who contributed to the person I am today. Maybe our dentist, our parents. In all of these cases, in all of these scenarios, each of them are elders who deserve our honor and respect. Let's talk about words or some words that you're going to hear during this video. Dementia is a decline in mental abilities. It is not a normal part of aging. Those who are affected are typically over the age of 65, although there are some cases where dementia has affected those who are under 65. It's an impairment in cognitive functions, the way the brain works. And typically, residents who enter our facilities are struggling with the everyday tasks. Things simple, such as memory. Memory is the hallmark of dementia, a decline in the ability to recall recent events, conversations, misplacing things. Dementia refers to an acquired persistent loss of intellectual functions due to a brain disorder. Dementia is an observable, often irreversible, decline in mental abilities. It goes on to say dementia is progressive and results in functional impairments. We certainly see that in the residents in our facilities. And finally, in the case of irreversible dementias, the decline is related to the degeneration of uh, brain cells or so-called neurons. Dementia itself doesn't refer to a particular disease, but really it refers to the symptoms that are associated with many possible diseases. And so under this sort of generic umbrella of dementia, there are many, many diseases that can cause dementia. Of course, the, the first thing that pops into mind would be Alzheimer's disease. And so the way people often will, will phrase the question is, well, what's the difference between having dementia and having Alzheimer's disease? Dementia refers to the symptoms, whereas Alzheimer's is a particular disease of the body that can cause dementia. Although certainly that's not the exclusive cause. Cognitive functions include things like our memory, orientation, language, judgment, perception, attention, the ability to perform and sequence tasks. While this is a normal day occurrence for each of us, for our residents it's very difficult. They're challenged each day because they're cognitively impaired. Think about their memory, for instance. Recalling events, lifetime events, Recalling recent events, where have they been, what they've had for lunch or dinner, become very, very strained. Being oriented to date, to the time, to where they are, is also a challenge for our residents. They rely on us to show them their ways every day. When we talk about memory function declining in dementia, we really should think of the, the two different types of memory that can be involved, and that would be short-term memory and long-term memory. Short-term memory would refer to recent stuff, new names, new places, learning things. Short-term memory is obviously essential to learning new things. That's not just learning new names, but learning new skills. Whereas, therefore, obviously the long-term memories refer to the more distant past. Um, you know, where you grew up, your parents' names. Uh, names of your kids, if you have kids. You know, those things are our, our long-term memories. Uh, as we get older, and you know, in the case of residents in our communities, it would be things like what they did for a living, and what, what their family environment was like, these long-term memories. What you generally see is that short-term memory is going to be affected or impaired first. 
And that is pretty consistent from one case to the next. That you're going to see deficits in short-term memories. But very often, the long-term memories can remain quite strong, quite intact. And again, you see this in the community where you have residents that they can't remember that they ate lunch 10 minutes ago. But they could tell you how to make it. Now, they could tell you the recipe that they've been cooking for years, but the fact that they just ate lunch, it just isn't there. Language is also impaired for our residents. How they receive information, how they explain themselves, is a real challenge for us to understand and for them to make their needs known. Row, row, row your boat. When we talk about language skills of persons with dementia, we're not necessarily talking about, you know, can they hear, uh, can they shape, you know, words with their mouth and things like that. We're talking much more about the cognitive aspects to, to language function. You know, really the, the role of the higher parts of our brain as it relates to language. And what, what sometimes may appear like a resident who is resistive or a resident who's refusing care, very well may, may be a resident who just doesn't understand. Judgment, reasoning, safety issues become a real concern when judgment is impaired. Going across the street, driving a car, very difficult for our residents. The simple things in life, you know, the getting dressed, the putting on shoes, the brushing teeth, um, most of the ADLs, as far as our brain is concerned, is just a sequence of movements. And so you'll see folks with dementia, they get lost on the sequence. And so that's why you have that person that once they get in the bath, two seconds later, they're getting out. And again, and it seems like they're refusing their bath, and that's often how we treat them. But in reality, what they may be doing is they, they don't know what to do next, so they think they're done, so they're ready to get out of the bath. When if we just simply put the washcloth in their hands and started it moving across their body, they may quickly realize that, you know, okay, I need to wash my body. And then we move them to the leg, we move them to the next leg, and we get them through the process just by showing them the steps. And you'll be doing These various cognitive functions are going to decline in one way or another. Now, it can't be stressed enough that from one resident to another, the symptoms can be dramatically different. So we're not saying that everyone with dementia is going to have all of these symptoms. But it's the old cliche of use it or lose it. You know, if the person can still do it, we really want to encourage that. Because once we start doing it for them, they, they may lose that skill. Dementia is sometimes broken down into stages. You may have a family describe a resident, for example, as in the early stage of dementia. Typically, the early stage of dementia lasts about one to two to three years. Memory loss begins to affect their performance, their everyday tasks, perhaps on the job. They usually have confusion about the time and place that things may have occurred. You may determine some mild personality changes, poor judgment in making decisions, Problems with everyday tasks like cooking, handling money, shopping become very strained. Middle stage dementia usually lasts between five and seven years, a little bit longer. Residents usually have difficulty speaking, problems writing. They may now need help with dressing, grooming. They may become suspicious or easily agitated problems recognizing family and friends. They may repeat statements or words, may have trouble sleeping. They may even see or hear things that are not there. An example, resident may determine that there is someone entering her room at night when you know there is no one going in and out of her room. Arguing with the resident would not gain confidence for the resident or solve the problem. But redirecting the conversation, reassuring the resident, building trust with that resident will calm that resident's fears. Late stage dementia usually lasts two to three years. Your resident may experience loss of bowel and bladder control, inability to communicate with the appropriate words. They may have difficulty swallowing and they may need assistance while walking. Sleep may be more difficult 
and residents may not even recognize themselves in a mirror. What is dementia? Dementia can be described as an observable, often irreversible decline in mental abilities due to a brain disorder. And although it is more common in persons over age 65, it is not a normal part of the aging process. Name some symptoms that a person with dementia will experience. Symptoms of dementia include impairments in cognitive functions, including memory, language, judgment, reasoning, and task sequencing. What is the difference between Alzheimer's disease and dementia? Dementia is a rather broad umbrella term that refers to the symptoms that the resident is experiencing, whereas Alzheimer's disease is a particular illness that can cause dementia. Later in the program, we're going to talk about care strategies and ideas that work with difficult behaviors. But here are some basics we need to remember. Having dementia can be lonely and frightening. Each resident is an individual, and the way we care for them needs to be individualized. Normalization or creating a world that is most normal is important for our residents. It's up to us to modify and adapt a world that can meet the needs and where the resident is at. Today, we're going to address why problem behaviors may occur. It's first necessary to understand that typically, there are four reasons why a behavior may become a problem in our care homes. One, poor physical or emotional health. Maybe medications need to be reevaluated and adjusted. Impaired vision or impaired hearing could also cause a problem for a resident. Dehydration, constipation, an illness, depression, being fatigued, or even simply physical discomfort. Perhaps a resident feeling too warm or being too cold and not being able to express themselves. Another cause is environments. Perhaps the environment is too large and our residents can't find their way. Too much clutter can cause confusion. No signs or labels providing cues for our residents is also problematic. Poor lighting or even too much light causing glare can be difficult for our residents. And a change in their typical, steady, everyday environment can become an extremely confusing situation. Residents can also become easily agitated if tasks are too difficult, perhaps complicated, or too many steps in a direction. Or perhaps what we're requesting our resident to do is new and unfamiliar. The fourth reason to consider why a problem may occur is due to poor communication. Too many distractions in the environment, such as loud music, the negative mood of a caregiver, speaking too fast, using unfamiliar words, and the caregiver really not listening or taking its cues from the resident, such as watching body language. Let's look at some basic guidelines to help us communicate when we're working with our residents. Always remember to smile. This creates a level of trust between the caregiver and the resident. Make eye contact so they know that your directions are speaking to them. Use short sentences so things are familiar and the resident has the ability and time to interpret the meaning of what you are trying to say. Low voices and low tones also make things easier for a resident to interpret. And do things together, again, building up that level of trust and also modeling what you'd like the resident to do. Repeat using the same choice of words. Demonstrate what you mean and slow down. What we definitely never want to do is to argue with the resident. This only creates a tug of war between the caregiver and the resident. 
we never want to use commands or force with the resident. There is really nothing that imperative that has to be done immediately or that time. Better to wait until the resident has calmed down and someone can redirect that resident later. Name four reasons that a problem behavior might occur in caring for persons with dementia. There are many possible causes for a problem or challenging behavior include poor physical or emotional health, environmental stimuli, tasks that are too difficult, and poor communication. Name a few tips or suggestions to use when communicating with a resident with dementia. Here are some key points to remember. Smile. Repeat using the same words. Demonstrate what you mean and slow down. Disruptive behaviors are behaviors that are disturbing to others, such as a resident yelling out, perhaps slamming doors, or banging on the table. Check for possible physical causes. The resident may be uncomfortable, may also be experiencing pain. Allow extra time when you're expecting them to do routine tasks. Encourage the resident to participate in safe and meaningful activities, perhaps helping sort some items, or folding clothes, or setting the table. Residents sometimes take things that belong to other residents. This is referred to as pillaging or hoarding. It's not considered stealing because the resident is simply collecting things that they find attractive. Help minimize this behavior by labeling items so all things are identified. Identify rooms appropriately so the resident knows which room is theirs. Place personal items that they recognize outside their doors or walls entering to their rooms. Don't get upset and redirect the resident when you're able to. Collect the items later on and simply return them to where they belong. Inappropriate social behavior is also disturbing to others. The resident who is suffering with dementia may curse, call someone names. Our job is to find out what is the cause. Resident may be acting to simple frustration or some other stresses that they're not able to express. Stay calm, redirect gently, and respond positively to their appropriate behaviors. Wandering, another behavior, is sometimes more stressful for staff than it is actually for residents, particularly if the resident is wandering into other residents' rooms. Find out the reason. Check the environment. Are they comfortable? Is it overstimulating? Are the residents trying to find their way home? Consider allowing the resident to wander if they are safe, but always provide oversight and supervision. Problematic behaviors such as hallucinations, where a resident may see or hear things that aren't really happening, can be very difficult for a caregiver. Perhaps the resident is hearing a pet dog bark down the hallway when you know very well there is no pet dog. In this case, reality orientation just doesn't work. Reasoning or arguing with the resident isn't helpful. Be reassuring to the resident. Use redirection if possible. Let them know you understand. Let them know you care. Make sure their rooms are reduced of clutter. In fact, their environment is reduced of clutter and overstimulation. When her daughter's wedding day Maintain a calm environment. So Grandma wrapped her most prized possession and tied it with a ribbon of blue. In her Often residents who hallucinate may experience delusions. A delusion is a belief in something that is not true and very much out of touch with reality. Perhaps the resident believes the husband will be coming any minute to take her back home to watch her children. As with hallucinations, Reassure your resident. Make sure they know you care. For example, if a resident is asking to go home, redirect that resident back to a safe area. Talk about home and the things they like about home. Reminisce with them and validate their feelings. 
Now, what if the resident is acting suspicious or paranoid? In other words, mistrusting someone, accusing a visitor, perhaps, or a staff member of stealing from them. Well, first, don't deny the problem. The best is to be calm. Listen to what they have to say. Be understanding and use distraction. Respond always in a caring attitude. Arguing or disagreeing may only escalate the situation. One of the most common behaviors that our caregivers have to deal with are called catastrophic reactions. Catastrophic reactions are typically responses to environmental stimuli, such as a loud noise. Perhaps someone coming into the room that is unfamiliar. Resident may act out, hitting, may yell, may run, may push. The resident also is a higher risk for elopement and may also become combative. Again, don't argue with the resident. Make sure you provide that calm environment. Redirect the resident away from the disturbance and encourage the resident to participate in activities or something that is meaningful. Always be reassuring. If this does not work, it may be necessary to use a technique called change of face. Step back from the problem while another caregiver redirects the resident to an activity or a safe environment. Identify some effective interventions for a resident who is displaying a disruptive behavior. First, rule out physical causes such as pain or discomfort. Redirect the person to a more appropriate activity such as sorting items, folding clothes, or setting the table. Allow extra time for their routine tasks. What are some care strategies that we can use when a person is wandering? Reduce excessive stimulation in the person's environment. Consider why the person is wandering. Perhaps they're trying to find their way home. Allow the person to wander if they are safe and properly supervised. What is a hallucination? A hallucination is a false perception, such as seeing things or hearing things that aren't really there. What is a delusion? A delusion is a belief in something that isn't true or is not really happening, such as paranoia. What are some effective interventions for a person who is delusional or a person who is hallucinating? First, remember that reality orientation is just not effective. Don't argue or try to reason with the resident. Redirect them to a more appropriate activity. Let them know that you care. Reduce clutter and overstimulation in their environment and stay calm. Let's now look at some common problems that our residents often experience. One, being incontinence. Ask yourself a couple of questions. Did this behavior occur suddenly? How often is it happening? Does the behavior occur in inappropriate places? Check the resident for hydration and ensure that they're taking enough fluids. Create a schedule. Learn what the resident's behavior is and when they need to use the toilet. See if you can identify a pattern, then take them to the bathroom right before their expected typical time. Use signage to help cue them and find the way. And please make sure the lighting is adequate so they can better identify the toilet area. One of the possible medical causes that needs to be ruled out is bladder infections or UTI. When it's time to help the resident get dressed, ask yourself a couple of questions. Is the task too complicated? Are the directions clear enough and understandable? Can the resident concentrate long enough to complete the task? Or have they forgotten how to get dressed? Are they embarrassed? Here's some tips that will help you along in this process. Show the resident what they will wear. Always again, provide privacy. Encourage the resident to select something. You may want to limit the choices to one or two, 
would have the resident participate in selecting an item of clothing that they are comfortable with. Simplify the choice. Make sure clothing is clean and appropriate. And break down getting dressed into steps, simplified steps. Your friendly voice and smile can also help. And be sensitive. This is, again, a time when the resident may feel embarrassed. One of our biggest challenges in caregiving is bathing. Before you give a resident a bath or a shower, ask yourself a couple of questions. Is the resident afraid of falling or frightened of the area because it's unfamiliar? Is the process seeming overwhelming for the resident? Are they feeling embarrassed? Or perhaps the water or the temperature of the water is too hot or too cold. What time of day is the bath or shower being introduced? And think about the resident's lifestyle. Did they take a bath or perhaps a shower or perhaps a sponge bath? Here's how you can help. Sometimes it's better to prepare the resident by having them hold a washcloth and maybe some soap to give them an idea of what is to come. Walk directly to the bathroom rather than reiterating, it's time for your bath. Let's get ready for your bath. Make sure there's good lighting and make sure the resident feels secure. Sometimes holding your hand and guiding the resident to the shower room is very helpful. Provide privacy. Make sure you utilize the curtains and the doors that are provided in the shower areas. Make sure your environment is calm and that you use low, soothing tones when you're speaking to your resident. And always be safe. Follow safety precautions to ensure the resident a safe experience. Expect to take your time while assisting the resident in the bath and make sure you work with the resident at the resident's pace. Getting ready for meals, ask the resident do they understand that it's time to eat? Do they understand and are they able to follow clear instructions? Are they being rushed? Some ways to help mealtime be a little more pleasurable. Make sure the meals are appetizing for the resident. Reduce noise and distractions, particularly loud music, clanking of dishes and utensils. Keep eating simple. Finger foods, if necessary, can help the resident maintain their independence. If soup is being served, consider having it blended. Consider it being served in a mug so the resident can retain their independence. If a resident is requiring assistance with feeding, remind the person that it's mealtime. Guide the resident. Provide simple instructions and serve meals that are simple. Small tables also help and serving one item or two on a plate at a time is usually very beneficial and avoids confusion. Truly quality care is a celebration of the success of a human being, even faced with Alzheimer's disease, in still allowing their self to come through. And so I know at our facility here, um, the staff and I are very committed to making sure that joy and laughter and success is a daily part of these people's lives. Um, for the staff, that means that I measure how well they're doing by the pleasure that they take in their job. Uh, meaningful relationships should be pleasurable for both the caregiver and the care receiver. And I know our caregivers here come to work and know that they're not only going to make a, a, a living that day, but they're going to make a difference. And they're going to have fun doing it. Sure, there's sad moments. Uh, we do hospice care and it's, it's sad to see uh, someone you've cared for pass away. But even the closing of that circle, the bringing to the end of that person's life, some measure of love and sincerity, um, you get more than you give. And I think the biggest issue for successful Alzheimer's care facilities is a real commitment to those values that you can make a difference and that it can be a joyful event uh, in doing that.